New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering CyberConnect 2017. Brought to you by Centrify and the Institute for Critical Infrastructure Technologies. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live in New York City in Manhattan. We're here at the Grand Hyatt Ballroom for CyberConnect 2017 inaugural event presented by Centrify. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante, both co-founders of SiliconANGLE Media. Our next guest is Param F. Katari, who's the co-founder and senior fellow of ICIT, also um, part of the team and the lead around putting the content agenda together. These are the guys who put it all together. Really an inaugural conference, great success. Turns out, you know, we, <laughs> we talked about it was going to be big, it's going to be huge. Um, by the numbers, it's just a great beachhead. The right people showed up. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, excited to be here. Good to chat with you again. So we, before the event started, just you know, a couple months ago when we were talking about the event, yeah. we were like, this is, love the name, first event of its kind, always wondering, you know, will people show up, right? You know. that, well, that's right, I mean, first time events, uh, we've talked about this before, there are so many cybersecurity events out there and so many organizations competing for limited time and resources, yeah. so I think to, have a, an event like this be such a big success in the first time speaks to the quality of the content and uh, you know, Centrify's role and ICIT's role in putting well, it together. I want to give you guys congratulations to you and your partner for running a really amazing company and event. You guys go big by thinking small, by being small, being relevant. Your, your model and how you do business earns trust. It's very community driven. Same ethos as what we believe in. Yeah. So I want to give you props for that. It's, Thank it's you. not usually see great execution thinking about your audience and constituents, yeah. so congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so with that, you got a lot of heavy hitters in your role, you guys got great community, big names. Generals up there, you have big time CISOs. Yeah. What's the vibe? I mean, you guys are dealing with these, this profile persona all the time. What's on the minds? I mean, obviously the general is banging his fist on the table, virtual table, or he's holding his coffee cup, telling war stories, it's basically saying, if we don't get our act together, yeah. industry and government, yeah, well, I, th I think what's happening today, and, and, and you know the business of the Institute, we're a research-driven organization. So, so as, an, as an organization that provides objective research, we have the fortunate uh, position to be able to advise to some of these commercial and public sector leaders. And so in that advisory, we have a really good sense on the pulse of the community, and we're able to hear directly from these individuals. We don't have to look at market research studies. We don't have to look at what some of these third-party groups are talking about. Yeah. We're able to communicate directly, and we can actually see and feel their feedback yeah. to what what we're discussing. There's no lag to your model, you have your fingers on the pulse. What is it telling you? Well, I mean, obviously we heard the message here, there's some work to be done, there's some technical core fundamental infrastructure things, there's application specific things, obviously the yeah. threats aren't stopping. That's right. What are, what's, what are the you know, if you look at um, the, the program that was built, it really does mirror uh, the way that the Institute believes that we need to approach um, solving these issues, and that comes with a, a layered security strategy. And so oftentimes you'll go to these events and um, we understand that there's organizations that are looking to make this into a more of a marketing opportunity for them. So unfortunately, the curriculum and content only touches one or two core competencies, which obviously really underscore what the sponsors do. What we've done here at CyberConnect, which is why Centrify is such a great partner, they understand that they may be one of the world's leading identity access management organizations, but they know for us to have a cybersecurity renaissance and actually make that quantum leap that the general and some of the executives that you were mentioning were discussing all day, we need to have a number of different technologies uh, um, uh, discussed and have that education uh, talk about things like the use of machine learning based artificial intelligence. Uh, talk mm -hmm. about how technology can enable yeah. automation. Talk about um, identity access management. Talk about, like we just heard uh, Terry Gravenstein, talk about the importance of building a culture of trust, right? Security has a human element to it. People is one of the, one of the biggest problems we have. So yeah. I think this is one of the reasons why this event, to your point earlier, is such a big success Farm, during the we, first year out. We heard a lot today about sort of the, the partnership, or really the imperative of government and, and, and commercial enterprises working together. You do a lot of work in, in the government. Uh, and there seems to be, anyway, our impression is there's a heightened sense of, of security for obvious reasons. Um, and <coughs> board levels in the commercial side have really tuned in to, to security. But still organizations seem to be struggling with what's the right regime. You know, it used to be just an IT problem or, or, or a security team problem. And as you've really pointed out many, many times at this event, it's everybody's problem. Yeah. So what are you seeing in terms of things that commercial enterprises can learn from government, particularly from the top, in the top-down initiative? Yeah, I, th I think one of the themes that you've heard discussed several times today is, and Terry again just talked about, is having a seat at the table. I think 
there's so much media discussion about cybersecurity. You know, all of our families, our moms, our grandparents are understanding that cybersecurity is a major issue. We're even starting to get some more general con consensus that cybersecurity is a national security imperative. And so I think this is helpful. I think now we have to start to, as cybersecurity practitioners, we have to speak in the language that resonates with. So if you're talking to a chief operating officer and trying to educate them on the, the impact of ITOT convergence, then you have to speak in the terms that a COO is interested in versus a CFO, versus your CIO, versus your board of directors. So I think language matters, vocabulary matters, and I think it's one of, it's one of the things that we see, um, we see starting, starting to percolate up in some of the conversations that we're having. Mm. Um, Given that humans are the main problem, I mean, we all have this assumption, we talk about it on theCUBE all the time, but oh my gosh, Internet of Things is going to create this huge space of people to attack, huge attack vector. But if the humans aren't <laughs> managing the devices, is there potentially an upside there, if that makes sense? Yeah, so, so you know, I, I, I think it all goes back to uh, tomorrow morning we'll hear from uh, Dr. Ron Ross and David from, uh, from Centrify, and they're going to be talking about uh, security by design. Uh, NIST, uh, Dr. Ross actually put out a paper, 800-160, which really talks about the importance of building better systems, devices, products. So I think that we are moving towards automation, we're moving towards machine learning, we already see it impacting uh, a lot of our society, and even, even down to, the, to your point, the IoT devices. Um, we just put out a paper about cyborgs and the use of um, embedded devices in, in actual, in humans and transhumanism. Um, this is all a, this, this, the ship has, um, the train has left the station, mm -hmm. I guess you can say. I think what's important now is to not make the same mistakes that we did the first go around and pause, and not put profits over security and privacy and actually understand that if we can't build it with security, uh, certain security requirements there, then we can't get that functionality. Or it may not cost the price point that we want it to cost, which may you know, uh, have it be more affordable for consumers. So well, I think we have to reprioritize. U.S. companies generally have not taken that pause and, and put security over profits. It's really been, been the reverse. And many would say, okay, but it's work actually worked out pretty well for U.S. companies. They dominate the technology industry. What do you say to those folks that say, well, profits are actually more important? Well, I, you know, I, think, I think it depends, when you say it worked out well, I think if you look at um, all those individuals that have been impacted by the breaches, I think that's where people are starting to really understand how it's impacting us. And going back to my comment about the national security side, this is no longer just about being able to steal your PII and maybe doing some fraud in terms of identity theft and whatnot. And when we're talking about uh, metadata and, and uh, capitalistic dragnet surveillance, and now if you're, if you're looking at who is stealing and, and curating this information, it could be special interest groups, it could be nation states, so now this becomes a much larger issue and a much larger challenge. So it's a ticking yeah. time bomb. Yeah is essentially what you're saying, and so then that begs the next question, does, does really government have to get involved to, to, to begin to impose its will, if, if you will, on uh, commercial organizations? Yeah, I, I think what's going to happen, and we actually were talking about this at lunch with General Alexander uh, earlier today, um, it's going to be a balance, you know, the, the government uh, will be getting involved, they are getting involved, there's a lot of uh, um, legislation being passed uh, that truly is trying to make a bipartisan push to address some of these issues. Um, but I think ultimately um, that's going to be, as the general kind of said earlier, it's just going to be the government beating these, these, these folks uh, virtually on the head until they start to uh, do some self-governance, self, self Arm, talk about your relationship with the general vis-a-vis -vis this event. Obviously he had great keynote, inspiring, obviously moved a lot of people, talked about the general common defense versus civil liberties balance and his privacy, as you mentioned. What more can you share about some of the things that he sees and feels strongly about that you guys are seeing in your research in the Institute? Because this is interesting, because you got a guy who says, I'm an army guy, right? Who's now looking through the prism of the future with past history at the NSA command center, cyber command center. Yep. He's got a pretty interesting view, and he's, he's, he sees both sides of the coin. Yeah. You guys are seeing that. People in the tech business are like deer in the headlights. We saw Twitter, Facebook, and Alphabet, you know, like, uh, and then the senator's trying to grok what Twitter does. Yeah. So, I mean, you have this generational gap. You also have historical analog to digital transformation going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. This is a societal impact. This is pretty huge. What does the general truly feel? What's his vision? What's his point of view these days? Yeah, so I'm not going to speak 
for the general, I wouldn't dare do that, but I will say that if you listen to his comments on stage, one of the things he does talk about and where our relationship is very strong is the importance of public-private sector collaboration. Uh, the general actually received our um, uh, pinnacle, uh, I'm sorry, our, uh, was named our pioneer last year at our gala, which is actually happening in, in a couple days in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, and he really, if you listen to his message, he underscores the importance of collaboration, not just uh, within a sector, not just mm -hmm. within government, but cross-sector and between public-private sector and between technology providers and government and yeah. legislative communities. So I think one of the things that I am comfortable saying is that uh, he would encourage more collaboration, more information sharing, and more trust among these sectors to work together to solve these problems. How should people measure success in this business? That's a loaded question. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think uh, success needs to be at this stage incremental. I don't think we, I think we need to be realistic in terms of how much, quote, success can we achieve overnight. Uh, we've, as we mentioned earlier, yeah. the ship has, has, has sailed. Uh, and so I think we need to do multiple things simultaneously. We of course do need to continue to implement technologies and strategies that detect and respond to threats. But I personally would say that uh, the, the true success is going to yeah. really be accomplished when we start to deploy strategies and reprioritize so we're actually building more secure systems, more secure devices. Um, I think that's going to be, needs to go hand in hand and we'll hear a lot about that tomorrow with uh, Dr. Would Ross. Would that imply that either you know, the rate of growth of breaches starts to moderate or the, the amount of data or, or law, amount of revenue dollars lost begins to you know, slow down its growth well, yeah, rate? Yeah, at some point that's absolutely uh, going to be the goal. I, I, th I think I mean, that- Is that a reality though? I mean, given that everything's <laughs> growing so fast in our business? And oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist. I think absolutely uh, we'll get there. Um, I can't tell you the time frame, but I do know that venues like this and the work that ICIT is doing is really important to getting us to that point until we get folks in the media and on Capitol Hill and in federal agencies yeah. talking about these issues so then it's not just the security folks who are focused on this but a, a broader yeah, group. Yeah, and I think that's the opportunity and, and you know, as we wrap up day one here, education and content value is the, what we're seeing. I mean, yeah. you guys see that all the time. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but again, looking at mainstream media and, and some of the techniques that the Russians and other states have used to implement memes and the election conversations, it's being gamified, we know that. Yeah. So the media picks up on it because there's identity politics going on, so I think there needs to be a wake-up call. I mean, I think the educational process yeah. is critical. Absolutely. What's next? And, 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 and that's where you know, we feel very fortunate to be in the position that we're in, because yeah. ICIT is a neutral, third-party, nonprofit, and nonpartisan research organization. Yeah. So what we're doing is putting out content. Um, we're not, uh, we're not um, uh, the, the I, sh I should say yeah. it this way, the information comes out. You have no out. agenda in terms of how to couch yeah, anything. Exactly. It's all our, 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 our agenda is, is national security. Our yeah. agenda is improving the, the, yeah. the security of our nation's critical infrastructure sectors, improving yeah. resiliency, uh, and providing trusted advisory to these various stakeholders. Well, getting the people here on theCUBE and having you guys come on and doing this great event really get, opens up the door for more voices to be heard. Absolutely. And we heard from your partner, had some great things to say. This, this has got to get out there for, so people, the press can report on it. That's right. We'll turn on the cameras. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what's your take on the event here? Obviously, uh, as an inaugural event, what's your analysis? Well, I mean, we touched on some big topics, right? I mean, the general in particular, he was talking about collaboration with the FBI, you know, Snowden Role came government. in, privacy, ACLU, Jeffrey Stone. Um, I think, you know, my big takeaway, as we were just discussing, was, and the general said this, Sony, for example, he gave that example, can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. And I, we've been saying this for yeah. a while, and John, you predicted this, you said a while back that, that the, gov the government's processes, technologies, know-how, is going to seep into yeah. commercial businesses, as it has so often. I mean, you look at you know, space launch, you know, uh, radar, nuclear energy, the internet, et cetera. And I think security, cybersecurity is such a big problem, only the government can help solve this problem. Well, the government's always been dealing with the moving train and the com corporations and the enterprise have traditionally been buying shrink rack software loaded on a server that's evolved to buying more servers that have been pre-integrated yeah. with software and buying silver bullet solutions and then leave it alone until something breaks and yeah. then fixes it. And I think, you know, when we were talking and looking at this event, my takeaway here is the moving train is never going to stop and the shifting of the game is going to be a cat and mouse good versus bad, new technology yeah. versus reality. Open source certainly accelerated the role of the public domain. Mm -hmm. Treasure troves of information are being amassed, whether it's WikiLeaks or in the open source. This is a problem, and then there's no real, like, 
real creative solutions. I am not seeing anything. So to me, this event takeaway is that this is the first time a step has been taken to saying, whoa, holistic, big picture. What is the architecture of a global society where nation states can compete with no borders yeah. in a digital virtual space, be effective, have freedom, and then respect for the individual. I mean, yeah. no one's ever had that conversation. Yeah, well we're excited to have it. Um, we've gotten really great feedback from just some of the conversations that we're hearing in the hallways as people are, are taking, uh, learning actionable intelligence, right? I can actually take this and, and, and sell it. Um, I think a lot of people are actually being inspired and that's something we need, especially in yes. an industry where uh, every day is about how, yeah. you know, cybersecurity folks don't get in the news when nothing happens, there's a commercial, I think it's IBM yeah. commercial, right? Whereas, my, my, nothing happened at work for my dad today, right? Well, that, that never <laughs> happens, it's always about what does go wrong. So I think we need to be inspired and motivate ourselves. Well, one of the things that we're excited about, as you know, we're a community model like you guys are. If you look at some of the early indicators of how blockchain, and even though it's kind of crazy, you know, bubbly with the ICOs and cryptocurrency and overall blockchain, it all comes down to the common thread we see in open source software over multiple generations. We're seeing in blockchain, we're seeing in security. Community matters. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. the, the role of individuals and communities will be a big part of the change as the new generation comes up. Yeah. Really fundamental, so congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Param here is inside theCUBE for our wrap up of day one of CyberConnect 2017. I'm Jared Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. <laughs>